I can't tell you how excited I was when I got the call from Father McShane about this induction. And I want to specifically certainly thank him, as well as Ed Crow and prior to him, Dave Roach and Frank McLaughlin, and a special shout out to Bill Perry, who's the person that nominated me for this. Uh, college at Fordham was not, it was not an easy time for me. And part of that was because I had to pay every dime in my education, but I also had to support my wife and daughter. I was driving a New York City taxi cab, a truck for the post office, uh, working in my father's fruit store, but it was also because of that where I started my coaching career. So let me fast forward now to 1981 where I'm the defensive coordinator at Dartmouth. We now have four children, but unfortunately we were going through a divorce. And I couldn't afford to live independently and support my wife and kids, so I got permission to move into a storage room above the football offices. I didn't mind that so much, except it had no heat, and I could see my breath in the wintertime. Remember, Dartmouth is in New Hampshire, where well, I lived there for two years. Then in January 1984, I made probably the toughest career decision I've ever, I've ever made, and that's when Miami upset Nebraska for the national championship. Pretty much everybody that worked at Miami during the 80s got incredible jobs later on. Well, they offered me a job to join their staff as a secondary coach and ultimately succeed Tom Malvadotti as defensive coordinator. But many of you know this. A coach works seven days a week, 80 hours a week, five months without a day off. And back then, we didn't make much money. I didn't think I'd ever see my kids. So I turned down the job because I didn't think I could do my job as a coach if I couldn't live up to my responsibility as a father. That's how I got to Wall Street. I'm grateful for my time at Merrill Lynch and then also my time at TD Ameritrade. I stepped down as CEO in 2008 and we had a 500% return and we outperformed every financial firm in the globe. I had never been in more demand in my career. And then I get a call from a group of alumni at Yale telling me that at the end of the season there was a chance the football job would be open when I'd be interested. And I said, guys, I haven't coached for over 20 years. And he said, we know that, but we spent time looking at the skill sets head coach is supposed to have. We not only think you have those, but we think you have some competitive advantages others don't have. There's only one problem. What's that? Well, in 135 years of college football, nothing like this has ever happened. That's how ultimately I wound up at Nebraska and then Coastal. And at Coastal, we went from an average FCS program to the, one of the best teams in the country today at the FBS level, and I couldn't be prouder of all that. Now, it's interesting because there's an irony here. There are several ironies here. First of all, if I didn't become a father when I was a kid, I would have gone to Vietnam. If I'd gone to Vietnam, I'm positive I never would have coached. In January 1984, if we were going through a divorce, I would have taken the Miami job. Then I never would have gone to Wall Street. If I never got that call from Yale, I don't think I ever would have thought about going back to coaching. And if I didn't go back to coaching, I wouldn't be part of this incredible evening tonight. So. From the bottom of my heart, this is an incredible honor for me. I am both humbled and grateful, and I thank all of you.